Walter. Walter. Good morning, Walter. Good morning, Walter. <laughs> Good morning, Reverend Ron. Good morning, Jeanette. How are you? We're well, great. Thank you so much for joining us here live in Dallas, Texas. I really feel excited about this information. And if I could start with you, Reverend Ron, I wanted to know why are you talking about diabetes risk? Well, first of all, my father um, had diabetes, and also my manager, his father passed from complications of diabetes, and he was talking with Novo Nordis and said we should come up with a campaign, and we got together and came up with a campaign called Ask Screen No, and there's a website that we put together called AskScreenNo.com, and it's just giving you information so you know what your risks are. I found out that being over 45, I was at risk. Um, African American made me double at risk. Um, had to lose some weight, exercise, because that also keeps you at risk and, and puts you in a, a position where you can develop diabetes. I had to get screened, found out I didn't have it, but I was at risk. So I just wanted to tell everybody about it so they um, can live a healthy life. Okay, Reverend Run, we know you as the iconic music uh, rock and roll home Hall of Fame inductee, but I'm going to come back to you in a minute. Because I want to ask Janet, uh, Janet Jordan. Janet, let me ask you this. When, tell me a little about pre-diabetes and diabetes, because I think people aren't afraid when you say pre-diabetes anymore. Yes. Um, of course, diabetes is a condition where, you know, there, there's a lack of available insulin or the insulin that you have is not working properly. And so therefore, the blood sugars increase. We get concerned about that because high blood sugars can cause uh, just a lot of complications that certainly could be avoided. Now, pre-diabetes is a condition where you're not diagnosed with uh, full-blown diabetes. The sugar is not that high yet. But at the same time, many providers are asking people who are at risk or in that certain range that they certainly need to begin to change their lifestyle, that they be, need to begin to, you know, cut out those sweetened drinks and watch the portion sizes, you know, look at how many sweets and candies that they're eating and limit those and begin to move more because your lifestyle and the things that you do can actually, if you're in a pre-diabetic state, can help delay the full onset of diabetes. Janet, you're a diabetes expert, so I want to ask you this. Yesterday, uh, the FDA changed the food label based on Michelle Obama's inspiration about Let's Move campaign. Do you think that will help people with diabetes and you think it will help the general population at large? You know, when I was looking at that, I thought, you know what, it's probably a pretty good thing because just for a quick example, if you look at uh, a soft drink, for example, um, most people, if you buy a soft drink, you're going to drink the entire, you know, 16-ounce bottle. But when you look at the serving size, it says that the serving size is 8 ounces. Mm -hmm. Well, that means half of that bottle. And so the calories and the carbohydrates are based on 8 ounces. So people look at it and say, oh, well, I just got uh, 20 grams of carbs and I just drank 100 calories calories, when in fact it was probably 240 calories and 40 grams of carbs. That's not exactly what's on there, but just for an example. So basically, in some ways, I think it's going to be good because it's going to be more uh, true as to actually what people are consuming. Thank you so much, Janet. I'm back to you, Reverend Ron. I wanted to find out that's so great of you to want to inspire others because you know how powerful you are. You remember when, I don't know if you still send that little text every morning to people. The whole world was just wanting to be on your little text. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm doing it through Twitter now. Um, I have about close to 5 million followers on Twitter, and I stopped doing the emails once I started traveling. I, one time I was in Australia or something, I woke up the wrong time. People was like, I can't get my cup of coffee. Rev runs my cup of coffee. So I just started tweeting when I got home. So people just rushed to Rev Run Wisdom, which is my handle on Twitter. So every morning I have to get up and, and get the word out. I got my word out nice and early this morning. So it's enjoyable to me. And now that I'm talking about health, um, it's a whole nother um, uh, lesson for me to give to people. I'm telling them health is your first wealth. A lot of rappers talking about, yeah, I'm wealthy. I have this car, I have that. Let them know you can't enjoy any of these cars and these things that the rappers love to talk about if you don't have health. So that's one thing I tell them. And I also tell them what you don't confront, you can't heal. And a lot of um, people are afraid to go to the doctor. I say, well, you know what? Afraid's not going to leave. Just do it afraid is what I tell them. So my thing is just keeping the awareness out there. People are following me. They're watching the, the rap career and all the different things that are happening with my television shows. I felt like I'd be a good voice to help people to stay healthy and get active. 
Well, you're being healthy in so many ways. I'm watching you on that little renovation show. Oh. I can't think of anything more than having a healthy home. Yeah, it's, it's pretty healthy. My wife's out there on the track, the trailers and hammering and nailing, and I'm running from room to room trying not to get a pillar or something to fall on me. So I'm pretty active. Reverend Run, I thank you so very much for inspiring people because I know you make a difference well, in, across age groups. And I want to thank Janet uh, Jordan, Jeanette Jordan, for being so smart. Thank you both for joining us here in Dallas. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yes.